This week on CrossFeed. Who gets custody of the child's fate? Is religious persecution biased? Are you ready to rumble? For Jesus. Virtual Christians. And iPhone apps of the apostles. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. Hey, everybody. I'm Pastor Jim Butler at St. Luke's Evangelical Lutheran Church in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, just outside Boston. Hello, everybody. And can you say Happy Lent? No, but we can say Joyous Lent. Okay, that works. Yes, yes, it's, uh, uh, I, uh, and yes, uh, I believe, uh, Lent is a very joyous time. Um, once again, I've given up, uh, all beer and wine except for communion for Lent this year. I, uh, may be giving up, um, uh, chips as well, but I haven't decided they're on the junk food yet. Your video's frozen. I don't know. Just, just try turning the video off and back on. See if that helps. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. There you go. Okay. That was easier. Um, so, uh, if he's going to froze like this, <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, so, what are you giving up for lunch this year? Um, <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm giving up my presuppositions. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not ready to talk about it you know publicly yet. Although people that follow my Facebook page might have some idea of um, what's going on. I'm I'm dealing with a bunch of stuff right now, but I, I am doing something kind of unique uh, for Lent this year, and that is my uh, sermons for Lent services are based on <laughs> um are are based on C.S. Lewis's The Screw Tape Letters. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, and I'm having a lot of fun, uh, writing those. And, um, so last night was Ash Wednesday and, and, um, so I'd give the first one and got pretty positive feedback on it. And, uh, if anybody's interested, you can pop over to shepherdtheridge.org and, uh, give it a listen. And so they're not, it's, it's sort of based on the concept. I'm, I'm not just, mm-hmm. you know, copying, um, stuff out of, out of the book. Um, but, There's worse things you could copy, though. What's that? There's a lot worse things you could copy. Oh well, yeah. So, um, um, speaking of Lent, did you hear about? Did you hear about the news babe who uh, was uh, looking at the picture of Joe Biden yesterday? Well, the because he had uh, the ashes. Yeah, she was wondering what kind of bruise he had on his head. Oh. <laughs> I, I was talking to somebody that said, oh, you know, it's just a, a political move to, you know, make sure that you're on TV on Ash Wednesday so that they see the, the ashes on their stuff. And I don't know, I can oh. give him the benefit of the doubt. He's Catholic, isn't he? Yeah, but apparently now he was so. bruised. So. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, well, maybe, though, he was a child of an interfaith divorce. Or maybe she was. There you go. I've got to start moving on with this stuff. Um, <laughs> I was going to go down the, the the getting bruised path with that one, but that's fine. Getting bruised what? The... In a fight. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we'll do that one next time. Okay. Um, all right, so we've got this... Uh, where is it? Here we go. Um, we got this couple in... Do we have a location? Chicago, oh, I think. Cause Chicago, it's Chicago Tribune. Right? Yeah. All right. Um uh Rebecca R- Reyes Rice Reese R E Y E S. Yeah. Um and her husband Joseph are separated and they or oh, are they actually divorced? It says estranged. One or the other. I don't know. Close enough. They are estranged. So what as yeah. vague as you can get 
as far as legal terms go. Yeah. Um, but all right. So it's, it's kind of hard because they're, they're sort of contradicting themselves. This is just one of your classic, you know, sort of legal divorce battles where they're getting into all kinds of custody issues and using the child as a weapon against each other and stuff. And all right. Talk so about she, ready to rumble. I'll tell you, here it yeah, is. No <laughs> all right. The fight faster has nothing on me. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. All right. So she's Jewish. He was raised Catholic. When they got married, um, he converted to Judaism. And so, and apparently they agreed to raise their child Jewish. And, and he says that, he remembers no such agreement, but she is enrolled in a Jewish preschool. All right, she's three years old. So, um. Okay, lady, I love you. Bye bye. Then he has weekend custody of her. And although they agreed that she was not going to be, you know, taken to a Catholic church or anything, um, he decided over the weekend to take her to the Catholic church with a camera crew in tow. Well, had no, her no, no, baptized. No. First, no, first she was baptized. Then he, she objected. He got a restraining order. Don't take oh. your kid back there. Oh, yeah, okay. And then he takes the kid to church with the camera crew. To, so, to just I mean, flaunt the fact that he's going against the restraining order. Yeah, yeah. Talk about you know, just thumbing your nose at the judge. And now um, uh, she went sin to be held in contempt of court. Oh, go figure. Yeah, I think you are, buddy. All right. So there's a, there's a few different issues here. First of all, um, there's the fact that a judge specifically said, no, you can't take this child to church. Okay. And then there's the whole, like, media circus thing. All right. Um, now, um, we've got this quote here from... Uh, Emily Buss, she's a law professor at the University of Chicago, and um, she says, The idea that we change religious views, that is what religious freedom includes, even if one parent has more authority in the form of more custody, the other parent can usually still expose the child to his or her religion, even if this was not the religious practice within the family when it was intact. Um, and uh, a senior partner with a divorce specialty firm uh, said that courts don't usually like to get immersed in religious issues. You have a very young child here, a three-year-old is not going to know whether she's at a Catholic church or a synagogue. That may or may not be true. depends on the kid. Um, but, all right, it does seem strange to me that the judge would make this sort of ruling. But, was that ruling made, and this is what we don't know, is was the ruling made um, for as uh, some sort of religious reason? Or was it just because the father's unstable, he saw that the child was being used as a weapon and said, um, no, you're not going to do this because it's going to be detrimental to the child. Now, the um, the judge said, or, or the, the, the wife's lawyers um, said that the child would suffer confusion to her emotional detriment as a result of um, what they call his malicious actions. I, I'd say it's malicious, not necessarily against the child. Um, although, you know, kids are pretty sharp and they pick up when they're being used. Um, not, not that they necessarily understand the details of it, but it's, you know, it's not going to be to their advantage uh, to be manipulated like this. First off, the, my view is that the, the, the kid's being used as a weapon and that the religion is being used as a weapon in this. Um, you know, I mean, what is it? Uh, she says that he... Uh, complained, uh, complained of, um, uh, first off, yeah, this divorce has been going on since 2008. So it's over, you know, I mean, this is, this is a long, ugly thing. Uh, she complained of extreme and repeated mental cruelty while he alleged she was emotionally abusive and had an affair. So 
there is no love lost here between these two people. <laughs> I mean, we are we are not talking. I, I, you know, this is always one of the sad things to me. Some couple at one time was very happily married, and now just you know hate each other, mm-hmm. and that's coming through. Um, I mean, I I struggle with the fact that he takes the girl to to church. I okay, I think that's fine. But without talking to the mother, without letting her know anything that's going on, he, you know, has her baptized. Yeah, that's a pretty major thing. And, you know, and, and here's the, you know, I'm, I'm sort of wondering, like, with the, taking the camera crew in tow, I'm sorry, if, if I was the, the priest at that church, I'd be going, you know what, you guys, the camera crew, you are welcome in here, but your cameras stay out. Right. You know, I mean, because the priest is allowing himself then to be used um, by this guy. You know, and that's that's what you know that really concerns me. I I just have a, a a real concern. You know that he's I don't know that this this is some manipulative stuff going on here, um, and you know that. Um, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, okay? Because, I mean, you know, we're Lutheran. We believe in infant baptism. We, we think that's a good thing. We think child should be baptized. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm, I'm really wondering, this is a situation where since the kid's going to the synagogue with mom, on, you know, and going to the Jewish school, that, um, you know, if the kid, you know, say, okay, well, that he's going to do that with mom, but on Sunday he's going to come to the church with me and going to hear that Jesus is her Lord and Savior, and then when she's older and can make a decision, she would then kind of choose which direction to go, mm-hmm. and if she wishes to be baptized or not, or then which would be the time of her, or I don't know what kind of synagogue she's in, uh, you know, if they celebrate a bat mitzvah, but if they do, that that would might be, a, you know, that issue. Um but again, here also though is the other key thing is that if if you're going to you know get married, you you, you know have to be on the same page in your faith. Of course, he he sat back and said, "This is no big deal," and converted to Judaism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, the Jews the so I don't think he was real strong with his faith. You know, again, that's another reason I think it's a little bit of a war. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, obviously, it's really not that important to him. This isn't, you know, this is, un- unless he's had some sort of epiphany, you know, um, he's not. And, 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 yeah, you know, we believe in infant baptism. All right? We believe it's a good thing for the child. But, you know, what it comes down to is you're going to treat her like this and, and, you know, play tug of war between church and synagogue. When she's old enough, she's going to say, I want nothing to do with any of it. Right. Because this is just being, this is just in, it's, it's a tool being used for manipulation. And you know what? Neither religion has, is intended for that or, you know, has anything to do with that. And so I, my heart goes out yeah, to the kid. My heart goes out to the parents. I mean, because, mm-hmm. you know. They both are, uh, you know, this has got to be a very difficult time for them. And, and, um, you know, just to have to go through this stuff is, is, uh, I mean, you know, I, I look at this stuff and, and I just, it just saddens me. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, <laughs> when I married my wife, the, the, the two things that, that most attracted me to her was number one, her faith and number two, her loyalty. And, um, and but so many couples get married and, and they, you know, they don't have th- those aren't the big priorities for them. And um, and and so it's it's like then they run into problems and 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 I just I feel so sad for them, you know. I I want them to have the the, the happiness and security and stuff that I have. And so to see them going through this, it just you know, it it tears me apart, and and I hate to see that stuff going on. But then, man, you get the kids stuck in the middle of that and try to pull them. You know what? That's just not cool. Something's wrong with you, really. That's that's know, for sure. But we've seen it too many times. That you, I, I've had a lot of situations where I wish the grown ups could act grown up, but 
they can't. Yeah, that's a good deal, bad deal. But speaking of wild fights, uh, let's go talk about the fight pastor. The fight pastor. All right. Now, the first I, rule, fight pastor, is fight pastor does not exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So there was an article in the uh, in the the New York Times about the Canyon Creek Church, uh, Pastor Brandon Beals, and um, he uh, basically they are using mixed martial arts. Um, you know, ultimate uh, what, what is it? UFC. Um, ultimate, ultimate fighting, fighting championship. championships. All right. And the, the sort of the way that people understood what was going on. <laughs> excuse me. Um, was that they thought there were fights going on in the church. War is not like one great. <laughs> and that's not the case. Um, they're just, they're uh, showing the fights um, you know, on TV sort of thing, pay-per-view or whatever. But they're not actually having fights at the church. Right. Although they uh, are crafting a martial arts ministry, and they hope to sponsor fighters in this UFC fighting stuff. Uh, they want to introduce a chaplaincy to this. And apparently he says, uh, the little picture says he uses mixed martial arts fighting in his sermons. So I'm not sure how he does this. This is uh, up in um, Seattle, uh, Linwood. Uh, so yeah, so, he's not a fighter. But, yeah, um, he's just a fan, and so he he takes his interest and um, and sort of uses it, you know, for illustration, um, and uh, and and uses it to attract. Although he also says. Um, this is not intended to be a gimmick. Um, right. It's not a marketing trick. And they said in the thing, it's some sort of response to feminism that the church is getting too feminized and, you know, we've got to man it up and be mocked. And he said, no, it's not, it's not it either. You know what? The, there, this is, this is uh, stuff some people like. Uh, and some guy, people who maybe not want anything to do with the church. This might be an opportunity to sit and talk with them and something that they're interested in, and then you can build a bridge to the gospel from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I looked at it. I, I, you know, I first heard, saw the a bunch of news articles about, um, you know, this fight pastor, fight church, whatever, and stuff, and I went, oh man, it's not another goofy gimmick, you know. But then I read it, and I went, oh, he's just reaching out to people in that community because. He's familiar with that community. Well, guess what? I mean, you know, I do the same thing. Not with mixed martial arts, but with, you know, the um, certain, certain segments of the online geek community. All right? Because, because I'm into geek culture, and so, and so I've got a lot of friends, lot of friends in that, in that uh, all, over, all over the world. And, and so, so I, talk, I talk to them. You know, you know and, it, and, and, the thing, and the thing is, I would, encourage, I would encourage everybody. everybody what's your What's your You know, where are your interests? Interest, and and you have friends there. It's there. You know, it's it's, it's not it's not that I go and hang out with them, them in order, in order to, to bring the gospel. Bring the gospel. To them. Now, 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 you know, I'm. I'm that's just that's just part of my life. It's part of who I am. You know, and and not just a part of part of sort of defines who I am. And I'm not just talking about my career choice. All right, um, but I'm, I'm a Christian, and so that's going to dictate how I live my life, and and it's going to dictate what I say and, and and how I say it, and and so when I are just participate in these communities, who I am is going to come through, and it's enabled me to you know to get into all kinds of really great discussions um, on a almost daily basis. With people who are not Christians, and I enjoy the discussions. You know, one of the things Jesus told us, He says to go out to all the ethne, all the nations. Now, when we hear the word nations, we think uh, nation states. 
But you know, when Jesus said that, there was no such thing. Yeah, there was the Roman Empire. Yeah, they didn't think of, you know, different, they're just different provinces of the Roman Empire. That's all they thought of. Mm -hmm. Uh, They didn't think of uh, different, you know, as we do, a country. So what they heard of then with ethne is peoples. The, really, ethne, the nations, the Gentiles. Right. Jesus was sending us out to different kinds of people. Guess what? We have a different kind of people here. Guys who are into this. Um, we need to build bridges into that. Yeah. Uh, there are people that um, we deal with in all kinds of different ways. Uh, you know, I, I, I hang out at a coffee shop now and then uh, to get to know people. Uh, a friend of mine uh, is doing a beer in the Bible study at a at a at a uh, restaurant, and he has six to ten people, about half churched, half unchurched, uh, and that's you know a way to you know to bring the people in to the gospel. Um, you know, the day of of doing the uh, um, field of dreams uh, type evangelism, you know, if you build it, they will come. Is long gone. Yeah. I, and we really do need to be people out there going into the harvest to bring people in. I was talking to my way, you know. district president this week, and uh, he made a really interesting comment. He said, um, and I'm not sure if he was quoting somebody or if this is original to him, but um, he said, you know, talk about the harvest is plenty and the workers are few. He says, um, we're past the harvest. The harvest was like the 50s. That's when it was ripe for the harvest, all right? Now... The harvest has gone rotten, and it is time for plowing and planting seeds and starting fresh. And I thought, you know, I mean, there's something to that. That I mean, that they're just. It may be in in some communities that we we just got to start over from scratch and and um you know and go out there and, and plant seeds and and we may pull in a, a harvest, but um. But the, you know, the reality is that a lot of what we might need to do, at least in some areas, is, um, is to just start getting the word out. And it may be somebody else, the next generation or something that comes along and, and pulls in that harvest. Now, I wouldn't say, you know, get discouraged or, or anything like that. But I mean, the simple reality is, is that the number of unchurched people in the world is growing. You know, we haven't been doing our job of getting the gospel out. Uh, right. But I would disagree with him that, that the harvest is rotten. No, if it, it, the problem with the harvest, the problem with people bringing the harvest in. If the harvest is rotting, it's because people aren't out there bringing it in. Right. Um, that was and, his point. Uh, you know, but I don't think it's, I, I'm not, I'm not so sure it's, um, I would disagree with that assessment, but that's okay. You're in Ohio. I'm in New England. So, you know. Oh, yeah, because there's, there's so many more Christians in New England than there That's are. right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> or are there Christians in the virtual world? Speaking of going uh-huh. out into into other places, now this is kind of in a way that's sort of the opposite, right? Because this, um, you know, the the sort of fight church thing is where you're um you're going out into places where the church is not okay, which this is. But at the same time, all right, what we're talking about here, and there's not a lot of information on it right now. This is from Virtual Worlds News, which is kind of like a, a marketing kind of thing. Um, it's really geared toward people who like to market um, to these various uh, virtual worlds, uh, whether you're talking like, uh, you know, Second Life is probably one of the more popular ones. World of Warcraft is, is more popular than that. Uh, but then there's also like, I mean, my kids like to do some of the, um, like, Littlest Pet Shops and Webkins and, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and I mean, there's there used to be just a few of them, and, and now it's like everybody, like every stuffed animal that you buy <laughs> has a virtual world attached to it. You, you buy toys, there's a virtual world attached to it, you know, and stuff like that. You just, you enter the code, and there's a lot of free ones out there that are advertising-based and all that kind of stuff. Well, there's this new one um, that they're... There's very little information on it, but it's called Universe of Faith. And um, they're hoping to tap into the Christian book and music industry. So, you know, sort of think Christian bookstore um, as a virtual world. Don't get too proud of this technological terror. Are you there? 
I'm here. You, you were frozen on my screen for a minute. Oh, okay. So I turned off my video and turned it back on, and you unfroze. So <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Um. So this, I I have mixed feelings about this. All right. As a dedicated Christian virtual world, here's my question. Is this following the if you build it, they will come model? I got a bad feeling about this. More than that, is this the let's get into the evangelical subculture model? Yeah. You know, when we, and again, you know, it, it's, yeah. You know, um, this is going to sound, I don't know, but, you know, I, I used to wonder about the guys when I was in seminary who had gone to Lutheran schools, always gone to Lutheran churches, went to Lutheran high schools, went to a Lutheran college, and went to a Lutheran seminary. And I often wondered, do you guys, you know... When you have your your confirmation kids going to a public school, are you going to be able to understand the idea that they don't go to chapel, you know, twice a week? <laughs> Man, I got to get off of it. I mean, because and I went to. I mean, I didn't go to any Christian schools until I went to seminary. You know, I went to public school, public college, you know, and everything. Maybe that's my problem. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you know. A lot of my, uh, a lot of my geek culture friends who are not Christians are Facebook friends and stuff. And we get into all kinds of interesting discussions. Well, among my Facebook friends are also family members, other, uh, Lutheran pastors, um, and, uh, and, uh, members of my congregation, you know, and members of my previous congregation, you know, just people from all, um, all different walks of life. But a lot of, my Christian friends are not used to um, spending a lot of time talking to um, my non-Christian or, or talking to non-Christians, and so it's always sort of interesting when somebody I'll you know I'll, I'll make some sort of comment, and then some of my non-Christian friends will will comment on it. And then my Christian friends will comment on their comments and they'll sort of get into this argument. And I, I feel like I'm eavesdropping, even though it's on my Facebook wall. <laughs> and, but it's funny because sometimes I'll just sort of sit back and, 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 and let it go and, and see what happens. And, 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 and I found that a lot of my Christian friends and especially my pastor friends, are not I can tell they are not used to talking people who are not only non Christian but somewhat anti Christian, you know, sort of militant atheists mm -hmm. and stuff like that, which a lot of my friends are. Um and uh so, you know, to just to to see them sort of deal with this, I mean I've had um uh, different people sort of send me notes um privately that say who is this person that I'm, you know, <laughs> talking to? They don't know how to deal with them and, and stuff. And it, you know, I mean, the simple reality is, is that we can't go and, and just, um, sort of go into a, a, a sort of monastic lifestyle where we only deal with other Christians because you, you're just missing the point of being in this world then. I mean, yeah, right. it, it's going to yeah. help build you up and everything, but I'll tell you something. I've grown so much in my faith from talking to non Christians. And they challenge me, and they throw all kinds of things at me where I go, huh, uh, I'll have to get back to you on that one. You know, and where it's forced me to dive into the scriptures, it's forced me to, you know, to, to read up on things on both sides of the, of the discussion and stuff to, to get a good understanding of it. And it's strengthened my faith because it's forced me to do this, and it's also given me uh, the opportunity to, to be real with people to, you know, to be myself, not sort of fake go into a, a place that it's just really not me. Um, and, and communicate with, with people and, and share the gospel with them. Yeah, I agree with you. It's, it, you know, but unfortunately, you know, 
I, I like the idea of the, you know, virtual gaming, but I'm just kind of, you know, again, is this another aspect of that evangelical subculture that we're just going to, you know, be with each other and, you know, fight and argue over, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, which version of, es- of, of eschatology is right, uh, you know, when, you know, there are people out there dying and going to hell. And I think we just really need to kind of look at that. So I just almost wish they would do kind of some sort of virtual world out there where they're engaging the non-Christians. Well, and interestingly, uh, in the comments on this article, um, they're talking about a virtual church in Second Life, right? Which now that, I think, is a great idea. Because people are gonna, people that play Second Life, which if you're not familiar with it, it's an online virtual world where it's, I mean, literally, it's just like a world and, and there's all kinds of things that go on there. It's definitely not a family friendly place. Um, because there's no uh, sort of sensors or anything like that, like there are with a lot of the kids' virtual worlds. And, um, but at the same time, because of that, it's an outreach area. And, uh, it's actually, mm-hmm. um, Interesting little uh, uh, trivia a bit is that at one time Jim and I did look into using Second Life to do this show, um, but it just it it was a That's little right. Yes, we did. Yep, it was um, couldn't get the the recording to work right and stuff, and I think our hardware just wasn't powerful enough, and and it just it just seemed a little bit too complicated for what we were trying to accomplish. Um, I don't. know, Maybe we will sometime in the future you know, uh, or, or do something similar. Um, but there's, I mean, that is an area where you've got people from all walks of life, um, that are, are, well, mostly computer savvy. So, you know, it's, it's a, a narrow segment to some degree, but, um, but you know, you've got people from all over the world and, and they're all interacting and and this is an opportunity to reach out to the to people that you would never have the opportunity to um, to, to communicate with otherwise. Mm-hmm. So and um, that's but that's being out there. You know, you've got like you've got it used to be called GodTube. They changed it now. It's like YouTube for Christians. Um, there's uh, like a I, I can't remember what it's called, but there's like a Facebook for Christians, and you know, and it and you know, I'm just. <laughs> I was in a discussion with somebody one time and they said, what's next, eBay for Christians? And uh, there is a cra- – I keep getting spam email from the Craigslist for Christians. It's irritating me that they're spamming me. <laughs> if you're a Christian business, don't spam me. <laughs> it's illegal. <laughs> right? But, um, you know, the, the, re- really, do we need to go off in our own little – is that what we're called as Christians to do is go off in our own safe little – um, little monasteries and convents and, and, you know, I mean, because, you know, even my kids are, they're out in the world, you know, and, um, and yeah, I need to make sure as a parent that I am watching them and, and, and talking to them and keeping communication lines with them open so that when they do encounter something that they're not used to, um, that I can, um, that I can help them with that. And they come to me with questions if they have questions about things and, you know, and, and they grow, but it's also an opportunity for them to be out in the world and learning how to talk to people that do not share your worldview, you know, and, and they, when they have opportunities, they reach out and love to people and, and, and they share their faith when, when the opportunity comes. It's not that they're going around like, you know, handing out chick tracks or something, you know, I mean, but they're just being real people and real Christians, you know, and, um, you know, and that's what we need to do is just, you know, make friends and not, not specifically seek out, you know, non-Christians as, as friends or whatever, but just, you know, seek out friends that you have shared interests with and, you know, so that you have something in common instead of just, instead of being something that you're not. And, but definitely I, I, I just, I, I'm concerned about, uh, um, the, now I do like to listen to Christian music. All right. And, and stuff like that. And, and so the, the Christian subculture is appealing in the sense that it's a, it's sort of a, a sanctuary 
to go to, to get away and, and to meet with like-minded people. All right. But you can't stop there. You know, I, we, we've talked a lot, you know, you talked about a, you know, beer and Bible kind of thing and stuff like that. And, and one of the things that I, I may have even mentioned this on a previous episode, but uh, one of the things that we've been talking about a lot here is that, um, that all of our, uh, anything that we do as a congregation needs to be a public thing that, that it be seen as a, a community event sponsored by our congregation as opposed to this is something our congregation is doing and the public is welcome. All right. To say, you know, you're not an outsider. Come, you know, participate in this. This is for you, people of the community. And, um, and I really, uh, the more I think about it, the more I think that that's what we, we as a church, that's what we as, as Christians need to be doing is, is to be saying, look, we are here for you. Our primary purpose is to be here for you, the community. And, um, and, and so, and we're going to, by serving you, the community, um, and, 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 and rejoicing with you and sharing your burdens, that's how we're going to grow at the same time. Oh, very nice, Blaine. Mm-hmm. So. Well, or we can send out uh, uh, apps over iPhones. Maybe that would help uh, reach some people. Um, now this is this is a little different, all right. This is I I love. Okay, um, this is actually interestingly enough. This is a, a Telegraph UK article, all right. Um, that is talking about another article that was on the. Um, the website, oh, what's it called now? Um, Ship of Fools, which uh, I think it's shipoffools.com or something like that. Just Google Ship of Fools. And this is actually a really cool site. This is sort of like the online equivalent of the Wittenberg door. Um, they, yep. They've got a lot of kind of satire and stuff like that. Um, but, at, you know, at the same time, their their whole point is, hey, we as Christians need to be real. And, and not be doing all this sort of ridiculous, goofy stuff. And, and so, you know, they have a lot of fun, um, and by, by poking fun at, uh, at different things, at, you know, and, and especially at Christians. Uh, but, um, but at the same time, you know, there's some, some cool things that they point out. And, and this whole Christian iPhone apps idea, um, is, I mean, it's, it's a really cool idea. And there's actually some really cool ones out there. That they, I mean, and and cool ones that they don't mention in this article. Uh, the top, yeah, I, I, they said you know the ones I think succeed are those that fulfill a genuine need are also imaginative. He's the uh, Stephen Goddard, the co-editor of the site. Uh, but the first one they 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 talk about is uh, the Hallelujah button. You push it and it plays a few seconds of the Hallelujah course. Okay, maybe it's just me, but I don't see that fulfilling a need. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't see it as being particularly imaginative either. Yeah. No, that's uh that's something that somebody whipped together in an afternoon just as a joke <laughs> and now they're making money yeah. off of it. <laughs> On the other hand, the guy said it's good for anybody who won the lottery or just sat through a very lengthy sermon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> um yeah. you know, it also mentions um other like uh Jewish apps, one that um uses the if you lay the iPhone flat, it'll point an arrow in the direction of Jerusalem so the Jewish users know which direction to face when praying. So I, no. I, I don't really see a need for that one for me personally. Um, but uh, there's one that uh, recreates the sound of a church organ complete with uh, two keyboards and a number of stops, um, which which I could, you know, that's the kind of thing that it's, it's kind of a gimmicky thing. I could see, you know, a, a handful of people that that would appreciate something like that just as if they're, if they are church organists and they do a little composition on the side or something like that. And, and they're sort of, Oh wait, how would that sound, you know, or, or whatever. And you're, and you're on the go. So mm-hmm. I, I used to have on my palm, I used to have a, a sheet music app where I'd have an idea for it, for a tune and I could actually punch it into my palm and it would output it as MIDI. Um, so it was, that was kind of cool and I missed that. Um, but, uh, and then there's another one that, um, called Bible clock that 
reads out a large section of verses from scripture whenever the alarm goes off. Kind of reminded me of that news story we did about the um, Quran uh, ringtones. Kind of the same thing. Um, using the touch yep. screen, it also plays the Lord's Prayer when users make the sign of the cross. <laughs> now that was gimmicky. <laughs> Any, any, all right. If the app is doing the prayer for you, you're not really praying, okay? Now, if it brings up, you know, maybe certain prayers on the screen, um, you know, maybe that would be helpful. But, uh, you know, if it's actually speaking the words, you know, that's, it's sort of like those those paid sites where you're paying to have somebody do the praying for you. <laughs> really, God doesn't want to talk to your iPhone. He wants to talk to you. I got a bad feeling about this. And uh, and then there's another one. Uh, Bible Shaker uses the iPhone's motion sensor, comes up with an appropriate verse from the King James Version to match subjects, ranging from anger to baptism, while Holy Rosary Audio can recite the Hail Mary or Our Father. So there you go. The, the little... Do my rosary for me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they, 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 an app version of the Hindu prayer wheel there. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I mean, I think it's good. I, I've got a few. I kind of have a Bible app on mine. I've got, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 maybe just me. I don't see a use for, for too many of these things. Well, the Bible app is nice, and that's about the what I see the biggest use for. Uh, I guess if yeah, I was a, a you know knew how what, what to do with an organ, that organ one might be nice, um, you know. But I'm musically stupid, so uh, you know that's. Now uh, the thing is, they don't mention some of the best ones out there that I've seen, like Mars Hill. They have an app, and it has like you can listen to sermons, and um, and it's got like information about church events and you know and and stuff like that um i actually contacted the um the programmers that that wrote their the software for that um but it's like five grand to for them to do a a custom version for you um which if i mean if you got a big church you can probably afford that and i mean it's a great outreach because you know you've got all kinds of people. I mean, you know, we're on our church website. We're streaming video. We're still working out the bugs. So if you go there, it's um, you'll you'll see some old stuff. And but uh, we're having some hardware problems. Hopefully by this weekend we'll have it fixed. But uh, you know, I'm I'm really hoping. But I was hoping to have it fixed by now too. So we'll see. But um, you know, to have to be able to. I mean, there's there's lots of things that you could do with one of these things. You know, um, having mm -hmm. the video of your services or just audio, um, you know, which is actually pretty easy to do. And if you're already podcasting it, then all it's got to do is grab your podcast. Um, yeah, having information, having like uh, uh, answers to questions or a daily Bible reading or, you know, or, you know, there's, there's lots of things that you could do, um, with, with an app for people that want to have sort of tools for their faith on the go. I mean, yeah, most of the ones that they mentioned in this article were kind of goofy and not all that useful, but there are useful ones out there. And, um, oh, th another one that, uh, we've, we've talked before about the triple X church, um, that they do a big focus on um, helping people deal with uh, sexual sin, pornography, all that kind of stuff. They have a browser that um, is it. What it does is when you install it, it actually disables the Safari browser, and um, and then you use this browser instead. And it's a it's a regular browser, but it's got a filter on it. It also has um, accountability built into it so that um, not only does it filter, but it also um, will send a list of the sites that you visited or something like that um, to wh wh whatever accountability partner that you put in there. And which I actually thought, you know, except for the fact that it has on the, the splash screen, I think it, it has 
uh, like information about internet pornography and stuff like that. I thought, you know, at, at first I, I thought, well, this would be a good thing if, if you want to get your kid an iPhone that you could, you know, cause you know, well, you want to get your kid a smartphone and then they can, you know, browse porn and you don't even know it, you know? And, um, Whereas with this, it, it'll actually protect against that. But if it's got all this information about how to avoid it, and like, you know, that's not even a subject I want to talk about with my kid yet. You know, <laughs> so. Well, there's another one on there called Safe Eyes that does the same thing. But okay. uh, Triple X Church does have a um, is a good thing. We need to move on here, otherwise we're never going to end tonight. Because uh, yeah. I know this is this, this, this episode's dragging here, folks. Sorry about that. Sorry. Uh, last thing we wanted to deal with is, um, I don't even sure how to segue into this other than say we need to move on here. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a, a federal body, and it is the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, which started by the, Inter- the, the uh, Religious Freedom Act three years ago. Uh, and it's interesting enough being accused of religious bias uh, <laughs> by some former staffers. Um, because um, what they're basically arguing is is that uh, it's over-focusing on Christianity and under-focusing on um, other religions. Especially Muslims. Yeah, particularly Muslims. And they recently um, fired this one woman, uh, or I think it's a woman. Yeah, yeah. yeah Safia yeah. Glory Ahmad. And she says that um, she was uh, she was fired because of uh, her Muslim faith and her affiliation with the Muslim advocacy group. And uh, one of her, the researchers uh, there, Virgit Custon, quit in protest, saying that she would not remain part of an organization willing to engage in discrimination. Um, but, you know, now, I, I don't know. On the other hand, uh, um, concentrate, Pinky. Concentrate. Uh, uh, you know, and, one, and this one guy, Khalid Abu El Fadel, who's a Muslim, who's on the commission from for 2003, 2007, says um, it was predetermined who the who the bad guys are, who the good guys are. It was a very pronounced view of the world, and it's the victim of religious scr- discriminations are invariably Christian. It's rather suffocating. But current commissioners, including Wani Imam said, no, that's not the truth at all. Um, The guy, he's he's a mosque leader from Massachusetts. He was appointed by uh, George Bush. And he says, I've not experienced any small act of discrimination. I I think they're doing a very good job. They they fought for the Uyghurs in um, China. They fought for other Muslim groups. Um, You know, no, this this group's doing fine. Right. The, the the commissioners are made up of two Catholics, two Evangelical Protestants, one Southern Baptist, one Orthodox Christian, one Jew, and one Muslim. And there's one vacancy. All right. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of Jews. Or, I, I'm sorry, there's a lot of Christians. <laughs> I messed that up. Um, well, I, my question is, is, what's the difference between the Evangelical Protestant and the Southern Baptist? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm bad. I mean, unless, unless they, you know, I don't know what they might be. Um, you know, but uh, uh, um, but still, I mean, they they do have a a um, there is a lot of Christian persecution out there. Yeah, yeah, you know, that that that's true. Um, you know, I don't know. There's too many, you know, Muslim uh, persecutions going on in Iraq or Iran. <laughs> or Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the comments that they make is, look, you know, we don't, um, you know, th- this group is allowed to pick and choose which uh, which issues they're going to deal with and which ones they're not. And um, it's also not subject to the Freedom of Information Act. And so they they choose these, um, these things and, and they say, look, you know, in Western Europe, there's not a lot of really intense religious discrimination going on, right? Whereas, you know, compared to in the Middle East, there's a lot more discrimination going on in, in a lot, you know, worse persecution. And so what they're trying to do is deal with the worst um, of, of the issues. And, you know, and what it comes down to is anytime you have an organization like this that has to pick and choose what they're going to deal with and what they're not, you can't please everybody all the time. 
And there's always going to be somebody that says, why didn't you deal with this one? Because we were dealing with 87,000 other ones, you know? <laughs> well, there is a situation. Uh, I'm a strong supporter of a group called FIRE, Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, that defends the free speech rights of students on campuses. And it's interesting because a lot of times they're, they're accused of being uh, a conservative Christian group, and they're not. And in fact, one of the head of it happens to be teach up here, and he's a, he's a Jewish atheist. Uh, he's one of the founders. But he said the reason is is that that's who gets you know often persecuted the most on, on, on college campuses are conservative and evangelical groups. And you know these people, you know they you know because it's it's going against the the group think on the campus. Mm -hmm. uh, but they've, you know, defended some others as well. Uh, but it's just that type of thing. I mean, here you almost kind of like you're dealing with perception. You know, right. and, and it looks to me like. Okay, well, somebody else says, well, it looks to me, doesn't look to me that way. Sorry. Right. So. Yeah, so that, I don't know. I, uh, unless there's, you know, un unless somebody can really come up with some some concrete evidence i mean I, I i'd be more willing to listen to to these claims if it weren't for the fact that there is a muslim imam as one of the commissioners who says eh, i think it's fine you know you've got a jew as a commissioner who has no problems you know like all right unless these guys start speaking up and and saying hey you know I don't know. I I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt on this one. I'm not crazy. So. Yep. But I don't know. Well, on that maybe very you guys short think point, differently. folks. <laughs> well, yeah. we need to end, get ready to end it. Yeah, maybe you think differently. Maybe you have a different opinion. Maybe you've got a real cool iPhone app we should be looking at. Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, give us uh, a buzz at uh, podcast at CrossFeed News. Not com because we actually haven't gotten any mail for a while. We could really use some. Yeah, really or if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or something like that, leave the comment. And that'll get to us, too. Yep. Maybe so. you're going to have to unspam the one troll who kept writing to us the weird <laughs> notes, you know? <laughs> Message for you, son. So, um, but thanks, everybody, for watching. And, uh, you know, tell a friend and go to go to the iTunes store and leave a comment there. Um, uh, review. We appreciate those as well. We don't get very many of those, so we always really appreciate those. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but yeah, we appreciate you uh, checking us out. We'd love to hear from you, and uh, and uh, wish everybody a, a very blessed Lent, and and remember that um, it you know Lent is a time of reflection on our sin and realizing that we have not lived up to uh, to God's law, but uh, at the same time, we also remember that that's why Jesus came. He came to fulfill that law on our behalf, uh, to pay for our sins on the cross and, and to give us eternal life. And, and so, um, yeah, as as we reflect on our sin and, and um, at the same time, we're, we're very joyful uh, that those sins are forgiven. So. So Take care. That. God bless you all. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless you.